Right, so hello, my name is Jade Rose. Today I wanna to talk about weight loss myths. Things that basically just aren't true, but a lot of people tend to really think are. I think it's really important to kind of go through these because they are probably stopping a lot of people from reaching their potential, reaching their goals. If you watch all the way until the end, on the last point, I'm gonna share the thing that actually stopped me from taking action sooner. And it's probably the biggest lie of the last decade, to be honest. Number one is fat makes you fat. Now, people hopefully know this by now, but you know, olive oil, salmon, you know, these are great fats. They're not unhealthy, you can use them for cooking, and they're just really yummy. At the end of the day, it is about your calorie intake. And yes, fats do have more calories per the amount of food versus like other things. But as long as you just push and control a bit, you know, distinguish between the unhealthy fats and the healthy fats, you're good. Not all oils are made the same and obviously deep fried chicken is not gonna be as healthy as a good steamed salmon. Also, you're gonna be a little bit cautious of the fat-free options, you know? A lot of the times they're kind of like marketing tactics, especially if the calories aren't even lower and then when you look at the ingredients, it's just full of weird stuff. No carbs is the only way I can lose weight. Do you know how many times I've heard this? And when I say no carb, I mean no carb, like not, not just slightly less. So many people believe if they're not doing keto, if they're not doing Atkins, if they are not, if they're eating carbs at all, then they're not gonna lose weight. So not eating carbs at first will make you lose weight fast because it's a lot of water weight that you're going to lose. So it gives the illusion that you're losing much more weight. So when people who are so used to like no carb diets try and lose weight in other ways, let's say like a balanced diet, they don't lose the weight as fast and then they assume that it's not working when in reality, you're just not shedding that water weight that you would if you were on the no carb diet. So they're giving up before it even starts working. Honestly, I mean, you can do no carbs if you really want to. I mean, that's your business, but I, I just find that it's not the healthiest way and it's not the best way to get in shape. Also, a lot of the times people who, you know, act like carbs are like the devil, they tend to be yo-yo dieters as well. Not all, I don't wanna say all. I mean, if you're someone who does no carb and you're pretty good, comment below, you can tell me. I mean, to be honest, you do fluctuate in weight in general, it's pretty normal. But yo-yo dieting is something else. I mean, if you are like doing the no carbs for a month straight and you're really good, and then for a month straight you're binging, and then the next month you're doing the no carb again, like there's, you might want to rethink things. People who do this type of diet are always so heavily into it as well. I mean, it will be to the point where you'll be, you know, I'll be making like a toast, like an avocado and toast, or I'll be making a sandwich, or maybe a stir fry with a bit of rice. And then one annoying person will come around and be like, oh, healthy. Number one, just because something is a carb does not mean it is unhealthy. It really blows my mind that someone can truly, truly be so heavily subscribed into one type of diet that they then believe that a normal piece of food is unhealthy. Number two, and this is just advice in general, just from me to you, keep your food opinions to yourself. Now, I know I'm being, you know, hypocritical because I'm here on YouTube, you know, talking about this kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, this video has a title. If you clicked on the video, you have chosen to be here. But to go around telling people, oh, oh don't eat this because this is unhealthy and this is this and No, I mean, it's one thing if they asked, right? But if they didn't ask, then keep your opinions to yourself. Not everyone has the same goals, not everyone can eat the same food. Some people have invisible illnesses, which mean that they can't eat certain foods or maybe they like to eat certain foods because of it. I mean, you don't know, right? Medications even can change the way some people can eat. And even if that's not the case, I know they're trying to, you know, make other people healthy and you're excited and you, you wanna share, you know, your knowledge, but it's not gonna come across that way. It's gonna come across as elitist, as rude and annoying. If you wanna talk about healthy food because it's your passion and you really enjoy it, then keep it positive, you know? Tell people about things that you can add to your food to make it great, or tell people about something that you ate recently, something new you ate and that was really great and really good for you and the benefits of it. That's gonna go down much better because nobody likes a Debbie Downer who's cosplaying as the food police. You need to detox fast, starve yourself for a while in order to flush out the toxins from your body. I've spoken about my horrible experience 
experience with this during this cleanse where I ate no food for like more than a week. You can watch the video, the link is in my description box. But spoiler alert, it didn't help me. It didn't make me lose any weight. I actually even gained weight because afterwards I started like binging because I was so like, listen, if you want to force yourself to eat some nasty liquidy juice and not eat real food for a couple of days, be my guest. But is it going to flush toxins out of your body? Well, I don't really think so. And let's say if it did, right? I mean, you're gonna eat again, right? Like normal food, so wouldn't the toxins come back to your body? I mean, what's the point? In general, I just don't like this narrative of food is toxic. Food is this, that, 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 and the other. Listen, at the end of the day, all food is going to be some sort of nourishment for your body. It's just that some foods have significantly more than others. And obviously you wanna be going for the ones who have more. Black people, brown people, people of certain ethnicities and races are supposed to be fat. Now this is something I had never heard of, but apparently this is something that people believe. Now first thing, do not ever, ever let a single soul tell you what you can and can't do based on your race, your ethnicity, your gender, anything. Just don't even hear it. You might have to go a different route. You might have to do things your own way, but there is no way that someone can tell you that you have a limitation on what you can and can't do. Do you know how many people told me that it would be too hard to grow on YouTube because I'm black? And imagine if I believed that, we wouldn't even be here now. Look at the world's top athletes, just search runner Olympics and you will see what kind of things our bodies are made to do. No one is supposed to be fat, but there are certain cultures that I would say are oh, it is more acceptable to be certain sizes or have different type of body shapes and sizes. I definitely think when I think of like African culture, it is more acceptable socially to be overweight than let's say in some Asian cultures or maybe Eastern European cultures. There, I think it is much more, you know, ingrained in the, the idea of beauty. When it's more prominent in your beauty culture, more of the women especially are gonna have more, I guess more incentive to be slimmer. Also education as well. In some cultures, they like to educate kids. And even the school I went to, we had like nutrition education. So we learned how to, you know, make balanced meals and that kind of stuff. This was when I was maybe eight or eight years old. In some other cultures, they might see it as, you know, not so great and that, you know, they're too young. And instead, just wait until they're adults and we've already gotten them addicted to sugar and junk food. And then, only then look at them and be like, you know, you could lose a bit of weight. The sauna makes you sweat. It does not have fat melting capabilities. I wish it did, but no. When you step on the scale after the sauna, you will probably be lighter. I have an ex-boyfriend who is a professional boxer and if he wanted to make weight, he would spend ages in the sauna to try and, you know, shed some weight because when he stepped on the scale, he would make the weight. But the moment you start drinking again, the moment you start eating again, the weight goes straight back to how it normally is. Ice baths, you know those like cool dunks as well. This one is technically not a myth, it's not a lie. Technically it is scientifically proven that colder temperatures do make you lose more weight. The question is how much more weight? If you're doing it for fun at the gym, at the wellness spa, you know, there are lots of spas that have them. Some people, not me, like to go in them and, you know, have a bit of fun dunking in. Again, not me. I, I do not find it fun. But if you're actually having cold showers, freezing cold baths, and you're just shivering and you're hating it and you're thinking that you're doing it just because you're going to lose some extra weight or burn some extra calories, I mean, it's torture, it's not worth it. Like 10 minutes in the bath, you, you're gonna burn more calories doing a five minute walk, but the walk is gonna make you feel happier and healthier. The freezing cold bath is gonna make you feel miserable and put you at risk for hypothermia. You cannot eat out on a diet. Yes, you can eat out. I mean, all you do is make a few little changes to make your calories a little bit lower, you know, make kind of the right decisions and you will be fine. I have a video on this. I will link it below as well, so you can check out the description box. It is called How to Eat Out and Stay Slim. The last lie, and the lie that is just really getting people nowadays, is the lie of, I'm happy. 
The truth is 99.99999% of people will never be 100% happy. We are human beings and at the end of the day, we want to be our best. We always want to improve. And obviously there are some things that we cannot actually change. But what I'm really getting at is the lies, the delusion of this kind of narrative of if you want to improve your body, then you are not loving your body. People jumping on this body positivity kind of bandwagon because it's popular, because it's what's trending. And obviously never body shame, right? You always you love your body. But it doesn't mean that if you want to improve, if you want to be healthier, if you want to be more fit, if you want to look better, whatever better is to you, I don't think that that is a bad thing. And the fact that we're making it a bad thing is just, when it comes to your body, don't jump in any random bandwagons, don't follow trends or whatever, it is your body. It is about how you feel and what you want and what makes you feel comfortable. I don't have this channel so I can just tell everyone, oh, they have to lose weight and you have to be in shape and you have to to do this with your body. I'm trying to just give people the opportunity. Not everyone has the education. And if you want, if you decide to improve, then you can improve. You really need to ask yourself, am I happy? And if the answer is yes, okay, jump on the body positivity stuff and do all of that. If the answer is no, then you need to ask yourself, okay, so if I'm not happy, Am I willing to do something about it? Watch my videos. I have so many videos telling you what you can do, showing you what you can do. After watching them, then ask yourself, are you willing to sometimes walk instead of drive? Are you willing to reduce your sugar intake? Are you willing to reduce some portions? Are you willing to change those bad eating habits? And if the answer is no, maybe it's not worth it for you. Maybe you need to tackle some emotional issues, some self-esteem issues before you can actually get on the self-care ride. Either way, lies and delusions, they will feel like protection in the beginning. Ultimately, for me, that is what encouraged my eating habits to be worse and worse and worse. I kept telling myself, oh, I look great, I'm curvy. But after I got to a certain point, I felt unhealthy. I felt like I was in like a different body. I didn't feel like myself. And when you're going from a size US 4 to a size US 10 in the space of two, three years, the, I mean, it's, it's hard and I'm so happy I didn't follow that narrative or follow what other people were saying about me. Like people were saying, oh yeah, you look great. You don't need to change a thing. But it was more about me and how I felt. And it's important to take responsibility for your own health and your own body and take care of yourself. Anyway, that is my last one. That is the one that actually, for me, was the biggest thing that kept me from losing weight for a very long time. And I really think it stops a lot of people from changing their lives. Anyway, watch the videos I mentioned. I have a video over here that you can, you know, do a little workout with me and I will see you in that video. She's a Mona Lisa.